Writing, Publishing, and Promoting Your Book, a presentation by Ginny Graham Scott. Hi, I'm delighted to be here with you today. We'll be talking about writing, publishing, and promoting your book. I'll talk about who is your audience and how to reach them. Then we'll talk about the multiple formats for sharing your message, since this is a way to reinforce your branding or identity and reach people who get their information in different ways. I'll also talk about publishing, producing, and promoting your book on these different platforms. I'm drawing this material from the first two parts of A Guide to Self-Publishing Your Book in Multiple Formats. If you want to know more than I can cover in this talk today, see these books for more details. So now, let's begin. A good starting point is the message you want to share, where you think about the different ways to reach that audience. Alternatively, you can pick your target market, determine what they are most interested in, and develop materials to reach that market. Once you determine your market, you have to understand who they are, the platforms they mainly use, and the best type of materials to create to reach them. Breaking down your audience by different characteristics is also important in helping decide where to publicize and advertise your book, so you appeal to that group. One of the categories used for targeting is demographics. This includes the potential reader's age, sex, economic status, religion, ethnic group, education, occupation, and marital status. In addition, you might consider a person's interests, hobbies, political affiliations, geography, and type of community, whether urban, suburban, or rural. Sometimes you can adapt your book to a particular market, or even create different versions of a book to appeal to different markets. You can have multiple books for different markets, and you can readily make some minor adjustments and repurpose your material for a different book. Almost all of each new book can be the same, although it should have a different cover and some copy changes to appeal to a particular market. For example, I wrote one for book writers called Make More Money With Your Book, and another version for people in business called Make More Money With Your Product or Service. It's almost the same content, just slightly revamped. Likewise, think of different markets when you do social media marketing or advertising, based on the platforms your different audiences use. For example, you might target and adapt your message to different age groups on different platforms. Instagram, for instance, has a younger audience, whereas Facebook appeals to an older crowd. Also, consider whether you want readers to come to your website homepage, to your profile or book page, and ideally set up an email capture or link so you can later contact anyone who comes to your page with promotional or ordering information. Offering some kind of free gift, such as a PDF or link to an introductory webinar, can help. Another consideration is the different ways you can develop similar material to further your reach. For instance, you could turn a self-help or popular business book into a fictional story, where the characters and plot convey your message. You can turn a memoir into a self-help or inspirational book, in which you feature what you learned from your experience. You can pull out some chapters from a complete book and turn them into a series of shorter books and articles. You can create video presentations. You could package your how-to material into courses or webinars. Perhaps create a shorter, simplified story as a children's picture book. Try making a list of all the ways you might repackage your material for different audiences. Now I'll talk briefly about your content and preparing it for publication or production in these different formats. A first step is determining your topics and subtopics for whatever you are writing or presenting. For example, for a book, break it into chapters and parts of chapters. For a documentary film, create a list of the scenes. For a blog or article that's longer than 500 or 600 words, create two or three sections. Or once you create a book outline, 
you can turn the chapters or sections of chapters into articles or blogs, or perhaps adapt these into a series of videos. Finally, consider where you are going to get the material for whatever you are publishing or producing. Do you have notes or journals to draw from? Do you want to speak out your ideas, record them, and then work from transcripts? In fact, that's how this series of books was born. I created an outline of topics and turned them into slides for a workshop. I then recorded the workshop, got transcripts made, and then edited the transcripts to write a guide to self-publishing in multiple formats. And now I'm turning my material from the book into this talk. One way to make these recordings and obtain transcripts is to create your outline and talk to that yourself while you record what you say. Alternatively, if you prefer the social interaction to inspire you, arrange to have someone interview you in person, on the phone, or through a Zoom call and record that. Finally, you might want to add internet research, where you put the topics you want to talk about in a series of searches on Google. As you find relevant articles, print them out, and you can adapt the information you find to your own presentation, though cite your source if you do. You can either paraphrase or use direct quotes with cites. Just don't take too much from any one source. Generally, you can use up to 250 words from a source without permission. Now let's discuss the many multiple formats that I mentioned earlier in this talk. Whatever format you start with, you can repurpose the same material into any of these other formats. An assistant or ghostwriter can help you reformat your message. These formats include print books, ebooks, audiobooks, blogs, articles, videos, PowerPoint presentation, press releases, websites, and landing pages. These are some other common formats you can use. One is creating PDF booklets to use as giveaways in promotions or free gifts, and sometimes you can sell them if you have information that is highly valuable to your audience, such as how to save or make money through your unique method. Another format for using the material from your book is doing a radio show or a podcast, which you can make available for free or sell. For example, you can record a chapter from your book for a 30-minute or hour show or podcast. If you have interviewed people for your book, you might feature them on your shows. Another possibility is to record your show, transcribe it, and turn that into a book. You can also create videos for your book. You can narrate your book on camera, or you can create a PowerPoint presentation and record your book as you go from slide to slide. There is also text-to-voice technology, where you can choose among different voices. These voices are now very realistic, although this technology is best for a straight narration. If you want a more emotional reading, hire a live narrator. You can also use your website or landing page to feature some chapters of your book for promotional purposes. This way, visitors to your site can get a taste of your book as an incentive to buy the whole book. Or they might hire you for your services if you are using your book to get clients. You can sell your book directly from that page or send viewers to Amazon to buy it there. The landing page, sometimes called a squeeze page, is like a mini website or page on a website. That's where you send individuals who have seen an ad or promotion for your book. The pages commonly don't have any links for your website so people don't get distracted from your offer. They have to either buy or subscribe there and can't go anywhere else. You can additionally turn the material in your book into an online course, or you can use your book as the basis for a talk or for workshops, seminars, or webinars. You can sell your book through these programs too. Conversely, you can make your book from a workshop, seminar, or talk to a group. To do so, record whatever you say and transcribe that. You can transcribe the recording yourself or use a transcription service like Rev.com or a local transcriber. Figure on about 15 single-spaced pages per one hour of recording. Then, 
You turn that transcript into your book by editing it, since we don't talk the same way that we write. For example, when we talk, we may go off on digressions, use pauses, ums and ahs, and include expressions like, you know. You have to clean all of that speech up when you edit your manuscript, and you may think of other things to add. You'll also find multiple platforms for publishing and presenting different material. Now I'll talk a little more about the different formats to use. With print, most people start with a paperback, or only do a paperback. But you can do a hardcover for special books, such as art books, or if you want your book in libraries and bookstores. For the paperback, many people start with KDP. If you want to get into bookstores, gift stores, or libraries, publish with Ingram Spark. KDP is the most popular print-on-demand platform. It's owned by Amazon, so when you publish there, you automatically get your book sold through Amazon. Ingram Spark is the print-on-demand platform for Ingram, one of the biggest book distributors, and it's set up to enable you to get distribution through bookstores and libraries. Ingram Spark is one of the big distributors along with Baker and Taylor. Ingram Spark is a little more complex to use than KDP. Many indie publishers start with KDP and then do both. As long as you publish on KDP but don't click on Extended Distribution, you can publish on Ingram Spark too. Publishing there can help you find book reviewers since Ingram Spark is the platform used by more established indie publishers. If you have more than one or two books, I recommend joining IBPA, which is the Independent Book Publishers Association. They give discounts if you publish on Ingram Spark, and if you get any ISBNs on Bowker's My Identifiers platform. An ISBN is the unique identifier for each book you publish. You need a different ISBN for each format in which you publish your book, though KDP offers a free ISBN. Kindle is a separate Amazon-owned company for creating an ebook which can be read on a Kindle reader or with a Kindle app you can download to read on any mobile device or computer. If you publish a paperback on KDP, you can easily turn that book into an ebook with Kindle. After your print book is published, you will get a request to publish your ebook. You just click to do so, and most of your information from the print book, such as your title, name, description, and keywords, are already there. You just need to upload an interior file and your cover file. While you can set up distribution on various retail platforms, such as iTunes and Kobo, most people publish their ebook through one of the online distribution aggregators. The two major ones are Draft to Digital and Smashwords, which distribute your book in an EPUB format. If you don't already have your book as an EPUB, they can convert a Word docx file to an EPUB file. If you first publish on Kindle, you will get a message asking if you want to publish on KDP. The two major ebook aggregators are Draft to Digital and Smashwords. They are called aggregators since they distribute your ebook to ebook retailers, such as iTunes and Kobo. However, you need to choose one or the other since they distribute your book to the same markets. The distributor fee is commonly 10%. Generally, you are free to publish your ebook on both Kindle and Ingram Spark and with one of the aggregators. But if you have an exclusive arrangement with Kindle through its KDP Select program, you can't distribute with anyone else while you have that arrangement. It lasts for 90 days and renews for another 90 days unless you cancel. This program offers different promotional options, but you can't distribute that book with any other ebook distributors, and that can seriously limit your marketing. So I recommend not using KDP Select if you want to sell through platforms other than Amazon. Another format is publishing blogs and articles. Blogs are basically articles published on your website, on a platform for blogging, or as a guest blog on another person's website or blog platform. 
Articles are traditionally short pieces published in a newspaper or magazine. You can go from a blog or article to a book, where you combine a group of blogs and articles to create a book. Or you can take chapters from your book and turn them into blogs or articles. A major reason for having regular blogs on your website is that it increases the SEO or search engine optimization rating on your website because you have new content. Google recognizes this new material and increases your ranking accordingly. Also, you can turn the blogs or articles into short gift booklets, which are great for free giveaways offered on your website to get emails. Or you can distribute these booklets at events and networking meetings. There are various programs for creating book covers, such as Designer and Canva. The way this giveaway approach works is that you set up a sign-up form on your website, social media page, or in an ad or email. The reader has to put in their name and email to get the gift. Once a visitor puts their name and email in the form, they get an email with access to the gift, such as a link to a PDF file, coupon, or form with a password to sign up for a course or webinar. To facilitate this gifting process, there are website plugins or autoresponders, such as MailChimp, AWeber, or GetResponse, which automatically send the link to the PDF, coupon, or password to whatever email is entered. The idea behind setting up this free giveaway is that you will get the person's email in return for the gift. Then, you can send the recipient other emails in the future, such as announcements of new books or other projects, so they have other opportunities to buy from you. But it's best to space out these offers so you don't send them more often than every week or two, or even once a month, or you risk your emails being deleted or reported as spam. Audiobooks are still another format, and they have become increasingly popular. Here's how selling an audiobook works. You have to have good quality audio to get it distributed by one of the audiobook distributors, such as Audible, which is the market leader with about 60 to 70% of the market. As long as your audiobook meets certain specs, you can place it on Audible or other audio distributors. You can record your audiobook yourself if you have the equipment and ability to meet these specs. You can also hire audiobook narrators who will produce the audiobooks for you. You can pay them on a work-for-hire basis or share the royalties with them. I have exclusively used the ACX platform, which is also owned by Amazon, to find a narrator to produce over 150 books on a shared royalty basis. If you prefer to hire and pay the narrator, you own the book. You pay the narrator a flat fee, which is usually $200 to $500 for a finished hour. It typically takes the narrator about two to three hours to record, edit, and finalize the narration. Once you have a narrated audiobook, you get a royalty from Audible for each book's sales, which is usually 25% on a non-exclusive basis or 40% on an exclusive basis. This exclusive arrangement is required if you want to work with a narrator from ACX on a shared royalty basis. Then, you split the 40% with the narrator. If you look for a narrator through ACX, they will audition for the job, and you can choose which narrator you want for your book. I average around two to four people who audition for each book. To find a narrator, you put up an offer to narrate your book and include a short audition sample of 300 to 800 words from your book. It has to be on Amazon as a paperback or ebook for you to seek a narrator through ACX, which is owned by Amazon. Now let's talk about promotional materials. Some of the major promotional formats include PDFs, press releases, and crowdfunding campaigns. One major promotional approach is creating a PDF booklet to use as a free giveaway. This is where you take anything from a few pages to a complete book and put it into a PDF format. Often, you may want to add an attractive cover page. Generally, the free giveaways are a few pages, 
though sometimes people use a whole book. Creating a PDF is an especially good approach if you are doing how-tos on a specialty area or on marketing, sales, making money, or on tips for health. You can also use the information from your book to create press releases to promote it. Such a release can be especially effective if you have a newsworthy topic or if you are well known for something, or if your book is on a unique topic that can attract the press. Sometimes crowdfunding campaigns can work to raise money to research and write some books, or you can use the crowdfunding campaign as another form of promotion. These campaigns are normally from 30 to 60 days. These campaigns are most effective if you already have a following before you launch the campaign, or if your book is about a topic in the news, or if it's about a good cause. These campaigns don't work so well for ordinary self-help, business books, and memoirs, since there are so many books in these categories and so many crowdfunding campaigns. Now let's talk about different publishing options, since there are different types of publishers. One is the traditional mainstream publisher, which includes several different types. The major publishing houses, which have multiple imprints, are the big five, resulting from many consolidations in the industry. The big five are Penguin Random House, Simon & Schuster, HarperCollins, Macmillan, and the Hachette Group, which includes Disney. These publishers tend to look for the big books, and so do many agents. They want authors who already have a large following, or have already gotten extensive media publicity, which they refer to as part of the author's platform or visibility. Secondly, there are medium-sized specialty publishers who are well-established in a particular niche or specialize in a certain type of book, such as a self-help or popular business book. There are also many smaller publishers with perhaps 20 books or less a year, and commonly, They don't offer any advance or a very small one of $1,000 to $2,000. The main advantage for publishing with them is they already have channels of distribution established, and they can do some marketing of your book. Or they may alert you to options which you can pursue yourself, such as sharing the costs of getting into certain catalogs to bookstores, libraries, and book reviewers. These smaller publishers might also feature some of the books they publish at some book shows and community fairs. Plus, there is some prestige associated with publishing with a traditional publisher rather than self-publishing, since that can help you get reviews and attract some media interest, generally in your local area. Still another possibility for publishing your book is pay-to-play, or hybrid publishing where the author becomes an investor in their book. Usually, the author pays about 50% of the cost of production and marketing to the publisher, or pays for the total cost of production and part of the marketing expenses. The cost is typically $7,000 to $10,000. In some cases, these pay-to-play books are included in a special imprint within an already established company. Other hybrid publishers are independent publishers using the hybrid model to finance all or most of these books. There can be some benefit from being promoted through the hybrid's marketing arm or publicist for all their authors, and some authors have found this approach works for them, but many have not, finding that they didn't recoup their costs. Another approach that some authors have used is participation in anthologies. In an anthology, somebody who has a big name is the lead author, while you are one of the 10 to 25 other writers who are part of a book which is focused around a particular theme. Depending on the number of authors, your contribution might be 4 to 15 pages. Commonly, the anthology is published to look like it's co-authored with you and the name author, so you get your book with a cover which suggests this. But otherwise, the interior of the book is the same for all participating authors. Typically, you pay about $2,500.
sometimes as much as $5,000 to $7,500, to be part of this project, and you get about 300 books. Don't expect to make any royalty income on such a book, since there are so many people involved, but you can buy books at wholesale if you are speaking or doing workshops where you can sell them. One advantage of these anthologies is being associated with a few name authors and some joint promotions. But often, it is better to publish your own chapter as a short book of 25 or more pages and market and promote that. Still another option for self-publishing are printing and marketing companies that offer packages such as Lulu, Book Baby, and Book Locker. They have a variety of publishing and marketing packages, with a typical starting price of $700 to $1,500, depending on whether you want to only print some books or want a basic marketing package too. But you may find the cost of your books are substantially higher than when you do it yourself with a print-on-demand platform. For instance, I had one client who was going to publish a book with one of these companies for $5.53 a book with a minimum of 100 books, plus postage. But when I got him onto the KDP platform, he paid $2.15 for each book, plus shipping, and could order as many books as he wanted. Additionally, there are some small publishers, which pay a very small or no advance, ranging from nothing to $1,000 or $2,000. They pay a royalty and take on the basic tasks of publishers, including editing, featuring your book on a website, handling the distribution, and doing some PR. At times, some of these publishers ask you to share some costs, such as the fee for being in a catalog or book festival. These publishers give you the advantage of having distributors and a marketing structure, though you may not get much money from the books you publish with them. Even so, if you are a new writer, you can say you were published by an established publisher rather than through self-publishing, which can open some doors, such as getting book reviews or local publicity. Still, some books with small publishers sometimes do quite well especially if you have a hot topic and can do effective promotion for it. In any case, it is typically up to the writer to do much or most of the marketing and PR. If you don't want to do it yourself, you might hire a marketing person and publicist to help you. Also, there are some independent pay-to-play imprints which use the hybrid model for all or most of their books. They may do a few books on a royalty basis with established high-profile writers, but primarily they are set up to fund their operations with authors as joint venture partners. Thus, you have to be careful about some companies that offer author packages and claim to be hybrid publishers, when they don't do much more than put authors into an online catalog and send out a few press releases. Thus, if you are considering going the hybrid route, carefully check out the company and the track record of its author's book sales. There are also some pay-to-play imprints of the big publishers, which work for some people, but they are a money-losing proposition for other writers. For instance, one well-known business book publisher has a program for authors and speakers who are not well-known, whereby they charge to publish your book by requiring you to buy a minimal number of books at their wholesale price, such as ordering 10,000 to 20,000 books at $20. I have met people who were successful with this approach because they were doing workshops and seminars and sold a lot of their books at these events or include the cost of the book in the fee to attend. But if you can't sell them, you end up with a lot of books. Finally, there is the self-publishing option, where you become an independent publisher once you publish more than one or two books. There are a range of options to help you self-publish, from companies that do it all for you to platforms you can use to do it yourself very inexpensively or even for free. These include workshops and courses on how to do it, which usually offer publishing and marketing packages, printing and marketing companies, 
and using the main do-it-yourself platforms, which I'll briefly review here. There are some workshops on getting published that are offered by companies that can publish your book under their imprint. Some publish a variety of books. Some specialize in fiction, others in self-help, popular business books, and memoirs. Some of these workshops can be very expensive, ranging from about $10,000 to $35,000, and you can participate through both on-site and online options. Typically, the presenters offer a free introductory 60- to 90-minute webinar or one-day or weekend workshop to give you a taste of the program. Then, you get a sales pitch to sign up for one of their packages. The presenter offers some valuable information about what you need to write and self-publish your book successfully. But you need to sign up to learn more about the next steps to effectively implement this advice on what to do. While much of the information in the webinar or at the workshop might be available if you are considering self-publishing, you can apply these basic principles on your own without paying for an expensive program to help you write and publish your book. Another option is a printing or publishing and marketing company, which provides some distribution and offers various packages for marketing and promotion. Some national ones include Lulu, Book Baby, Leadership Books, Leadership Press, and Book Locker. The cost can be as little as $1,000 if you are just publishing your book to be about $20,000 for a more extensive marketing and promotion package, which can include creating a book website and sending out press releases. Sometimes you will be offered a large royalty, such as 40 to 60% of book sales, and you will have various options for buying your book, often at the discounted price offered to retailers or wholesalers though the price can be more than using a print-on-demand platform like KDP or IngramSpark. If you are considering going this route, check to see what is included in the package and ask for examples of other books that the company has published with what results. Finally, I've listed the major do-it-yourself platforms for print, ebooks, and audiobooks. Generally, Indie publishers start with print or ebooks and later turn the book into an audiobook. Now I have a special offer for those viewing this presentation. And here's how you can contact us. Mm -hmm.